Amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. We are beginning a new series of teaching that we have titled, God Works Through His Word. Praise God. Amen. You need to understand that because a lot of people are expecting God to do things. And they don't take time to find out what his word says about those things. Praise God. Amen. And so no faith is developed. And you don't know the will of God for with a certain thing or a certain situation. And so that's why God gives you his word. He provides you and I his word so that we can know what he desires to do for us. You can know what he desires for you to do for him. And you can know how to live your life for Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Those of us living in these western nations such as the United States have no excuse because we got Bibles on top of Bibles and multiple English translations. And so we should know the word of God. We got teachers all over the place. Praise God. Amen. I mean, if the internet is, the YouTube is filled with fantastic Bible teachers. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And those of you at Christ Victory Bible Teacher Center, you have a wonderful teacher right here. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And he just happens to use me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all thought I was going to be vain in here. <laughs> when it comes to things like this, I give all the glory to the Holy Spirit. Because if, I don't, Amen. If, if, if I am teaching and um, and it's wrong, I take all the credit. But if you're getting blessed by the teaching, then all the glory has to go to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I can't do nothing apart from my glory. So, Matthew chapter 13, let's read verses 18 through 23, and then we're going to break it down for you. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom... And understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. But when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, how many of y'all know that tribulation and persecution is going to come because of the word? Yep. Amen. It says it right there. Amen. By and by, he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it which also hid, bear fruit, and bring forth some an hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus has just given us a description of the different reactions to the word of God. You know, um, I'm not here to judge anybody, so, I, so I'm not looking at any of you um, in any kind of way. All I can say is that in every church, there are different receptors, praise God. Amen. And instead of me trying to identify you, you should be looking at this, what Jesus said, and identify yourself, praise God. Amen. Where am I at? And what, what kind of soil am I? Mm. What, what type of person am I when it comes to the word of God? Am I a receiver or do I let things happen that keep me from receiving, praise God? Amen. And not only that, at what percentage, if I am a receiver, what percentage am I at receiving? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, the first thing you need to understand is God has one particular responsibility when it comes to the word. His job is to provide it. Praise God. Amen. He's already made, God's going to do his word. Hallelujah. Amen. He's going to do his word, but you have to be a receiver. Praise God. So God's only responsibility is to provide it. His responsibility is to raise up preachers and teachers who will sow the word. See, I am like a farmer. I, I've never, except for doing some gardening, I've never farmed in my whole life. <laughs> Praise God. And even then I, did, I didn't do well. I, and, and that's sad because 
Most of my ancestors were farmers, including my father. Praise God. And my father was a farmer. He always talked, to me, but the problem is he raised me and my family up and the rest of my siblings up in the city. Now, he always talked about one day, son, we're going to move down to North Carolina, go buy a farm and get some pigs and goats and cows. And I'm like, nah, nah not in my lifetime. Because, I mean, you raised me up in the city. I ain't about to do all that farm work. <laughs> but, but, but I've never been a farmer, but the Bible says that I'm a farmer in the sense that I sow the word of God because I've been called to teach and preach the word. Praise Jesus. Amen. And so God's responsibility is to provide you with a vessel in which he sows his word through. And you know what my responsibility is? To give you the word. Jump up the um, verses 3 and 4. I just want you to see this real quickly. Matthew 13, verse 3 and 4, and it says, And he, the Lord Jesus, spake many parable, many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to do what? Sow. So. What is my responsibility? Sow. So. So. Praise God. Amen. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Again, what is my responsibility to so. sow? Hallelujah. Your responsibility is to receive. receive. I can't make you receive. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't make you listen to me. I do, I, I'm not even going to try to make you do that. Um, you know, I know there's some pastors that are, and, and I don't agree with this at all. And that's why I don't do this to y'all. There are some pastors that feel like they need to go to people's houses and check your check on them, make sure they're living right, make sure they're doing right. <laughs> now, now, Pastor Troy, you know why Pastor, I, I've told y'all this before, you know why Pastor Troy don't do that to y'all? Because Pastor Troy spends 100% of his time trying to make himself do right, praise mm -hmm. God. Amen. <laughs> this, Pastor Troy is a full-time job, hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Just like y'all, I want to do wrong. Mm. So I've got the, and, and knowing that I'm a man of God and I, and I have to be an example to everybody, I spend more of my time trying to make myself to at least be an example to you of, of what is right and wrong. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, and, and, and that comes with being honest with myself. I evaluate myself, and that's what you're going to have to do as you are, if you really want to live a life for Jesus Christ, you don't have to be a pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I ever got called into ministry, when I got saved, I just wanted to do right. I, but even before I got saved, I wanted to do right. I just didn't have the power. After I got saved, I said, now I got the power to do right, I'm going to do right. Glory yes. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And I spent a lot of my time yes, sir. trying to do right. Then it was only a year after that that the Lord began to call me to ministry. And I still hadn't gone into the ministry after I got called. I still had to learn some things. And so, and one of the things I tried to learn to do was to do right. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. To learn, I tried to learn the word of God, not so I can have stuff to preach on, because I didn't have, I didn't have no opportunities to preach back then. I learned the word of God so I can build up Pastor yes. Troy, glory to God, and, and make Pastor Troy do right and believe God and get closer to God. That was my main goals. The, 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 the calling to the ministry was just a, a side thing. Uh, praise Jesus. Amen. But um, but the thing is that if it is not my duty to try to make you do the right thing, my duty is to sow the word, love you, advise you, but you've got to make up your mind whether you're going to receive it and do it. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You've got to make up your mind whether you're going to let things distract you from it or whether you're going to commit yourself and, and, and come against every circumstance, every distraction to get into this word. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If, if, if you don't um, do that, then you are forfeiting your responsibility. See, it's not my job to make you do right. And guess what? It's not even God's job to make you do right. Amen. Jesus has given you every power through his death, burial, and resurrection and he's given you power over your flesh. He's given you power over the devil. And now he says, now use that power and live for me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But if you don't.
don't make up your mind to do it, then it doesn't matter what Jesus did. It doesn't matter how much word I give you. It won't do you any good. Glory to God. Amen. And you're going to see that as we, again, as we go through this thing. But what is my job as a sower? To sow up the sow. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So, um, as a matter of fact, it's, it's not even my job to come over to your house and, and try to solve the speeds. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I, 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 I tried to do that before. Do you know I've learned a, a hard lesson about that? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Amen. I, I've learned a hard lesson, so don't call me. Unless you really want to hear what I have to say, don't call me, settle your disputes on your own. Praise God. Amen. If you want, <laughs> you, you want counseling, I'm available to you. But don't call me to interfere in any fights you're having with people because I'm not going to get involved in it. Glory to God. Amen. I'm not called to do that. My, my call is to do what? To soul. Oh, soul. Soul. Oh. Praise God. Amen. And you, you can either, you got the choice to either listen to the word of God or to just keep living like a like heathen. <laughs> the choice is really yours, not mine. Um, as much as I love you and I spend a lot of time praying for you, I'm not responsible for what you do, praise God. Amen. I am responsible for what God told me to do, which is to so, show. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm glad you're getting it. Pastor's job is to sow. I'm, I'm like the mailman. I can't. I, I, what am I supposed to do? You get mad when I sit, when I give you your credit card bill. Mm -hmm. All I'm doing is giving, giving you what my job is to do, is to put that credit card bill in your box. How many of y'all, when you get that credit card bill and, and you don't like it, you go out there and beat up the mailman? <laughs> yeah, but everybody wants to beat up the pastor. <laughs> what are you telling me? I'm just a messenger, baby. <laughs> As they used to say back in the old times, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just a mailman. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just delivering what the Lord Jesus tells me to do. So my job is to... So... So the word, glory to God. So the word, so the message. It is your job, and now I'm going to tell you more about your responsibility. Jump down to verse 19 again. Now, first thing you need to do is see how Satan operates. Because Satan don't want you to get the word. Satan does everything he can to distract you from receiving the word of God, because he knows that if you get yourself grounded in the Bible, you get yourself grounded in the God's word, baby, you're going to be dynamite. Hallelujah. You are going to be scary. The, the, the devil, see, don't believe all these horror movies where you, with these demons and vampires and all this stuff. Uh, that, that stuff may be scary, and it may be scary to people who don't know Jesus, mm. but that has nothing to do with you. Yep. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And it's just like, Anybody ever see that stupid movie called The Exorcism? Yep. It, you saw it, Jeremy? Horrifying. Yeah, when I was horrifying. a kid, at least. I didn't get to see it. My mom wouldn't let me. She loved those, those kind of movies. <laughs> <laughs> but but I heard that the that the demon threw a preacher yeah. out of the window. <laughs> that, that preacher didn't know God. Yep. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He didn't know Jesus. Amen. I have dealt with demons. And I can tell you that they are more afraid of you than they than you are of them. Amen. It's God. I, but me and my wife, when you know, when Trish was just a little baby, we we encountered a situation where there was some deliverance taking place in our church, and that um, and there was a woman, a little skinny woman, and they were and the pastor and all of them was trying to cast the demon out of the lady, and they, they told the told the demon to come out in Jesus' name. That lady, no, no. I'm like, where did she get that deep voice from? <laughs> I was scared. I told Taco, I said, get the baby out of this church right now. <laughs> See, because I didn't know any better. Once I started learning about how to deal with demons, it started from the teaching that I was getting from my pastor, praise God, Amen. from the books I was reading. Uh, uh, one of the books I recommend is um, a Kenneth Hagin book about your authority, the authority of the believer. Excellent book. Some books by Derek Prince, Lester Summerall. You know, I started learning how to deal with demons. I wasn't scared of them no more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I recognize, wait a minute, I got authority over them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so don't believe that, that don't believe these these movies are
are meant to, to deceive you into being scared of the devil and his demons. You as Christians have power. You don't have to be scared of them, praise God. Amen. So Satan knows this. He knows that when you get this knowledge, that you're going to have him running rampant. It doesn't mean he's not going to attack you. It doesn't mean that he's not going to try to do things. But he knows that you will know how to fight back. Praise God. Amen. And not only will you know how to fight back, but you will know that you already have the victory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the only way Satan can defeat you is to distract you and keep you from this book. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. This is the only way he can win against you. And why is he winning against so many Christians? Because they don't get into the book. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't listen to their pastors and teachers. Praise God. They, they, they spend more time watching those. Well, I don't know if people watch soap operas anymore. You know, we used to, that, that was the, the, the thing we used to watch back in the old days when we actually had um, only about three channels to watch. You know, days of our stupid lives and Jeremy's <laughs> stupid hospital and all the <laughs> other <laughs> ridiculous, as my stomach turns. <laughs> <laughs> All those little soap operas we used to watch. I, I I I had a girlfriend who was in the general hospital, so I started getting in the general hospital even after she uh, broke up with me. Yeah, she did the breaking up. I, I can admit it now. I know she is. <laughs> I, I think that was the case in just about the majority, except for me and, me and my wife, the one who kicked her out of the car. <laughs> together for some reason, right? <laughs> I used to sit there and watch General Hospital with her because, you know, she, because I was in love at the time. Back then I was falling in love every week, so <laughs> with different women, you know, 16, 17 year old boy with the, with, with the hormones I had, you know what I mean? But I watched those stupid soap operas and even after she and I broke up, I still was into General Hospital. I continued to watch it for years. And I look back on my life and I say, what a waste. Yep. <laughs> yep. Amen. That was a waste of my time. And, and, and it's a waste if you, when you're spending more time watching that stuff and not getting into the word of God. I know some of y'all like those Nigerian movies. Same thing. I watched a few of those Nigerian movies. <laughs> and they're funny. Some of them make me laugh. <laughs> but, but, but if I spend more of my time watching those things than I am in this book, the devil's got me. Praise God. Amen. Because now I'm what I'm, what's happening is when I'm spending more time watching soap operas, television programs, and, and movies, I'm allowing the values of the world to get into my system. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is taking and and, and the, the thing I listen to the most. The thing that I read the most is what's going to dominate in my heart and in my life. Praise yes. God. Amen. So when Amen. Satan is attacking me, I may not be thinking about the Word of God. I'm going to be thinking about what did so and so do in that episode in episode 33. <laughs> yeah. How did they, they? They were in the same situation. How did so and so handle this situation? <laughs> See, that's what you want to be thinking about. You're not going to be thinking about what the Word of God says. Right. Praise God. Amen. Because what is what you're put the, the thing you are spending most of your time in is what's going to dominate your mind and your heart. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And that's why Satan distracts you. Look at verse 19. It says, When anyone heareth the word of God and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed. By the wayside. See, Satan, and I just showed you the tactic Satan uses to catch the word and steal it from you. Praise God. Amen. He uses your mind. He uses all kinds of forms of entertainment, all kinds of media, uh, um, your own worldly value system. Do you know that the Bible is supposed to change your value system? Yeah. If you got, if you're thinking one thing, and the Bible says something different, you're not supposed to um, say, "Well, yeah, I know what God says, but no, you leave that but out of it, baby." God says, 
And so I change my value system, praise God. Amen. It doesn't matter what uh, my parents taught me. I have good parents. I, uh, my mother was a wonderful lady. My father, who's still alive, is a good man. I love him. I love both my parents. But how many of y'all know that they, they weren't perfect? They taught me some wrong stuff. <laughs> Glory to God. My father's the reason why I had some so many problems with women. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Dad, so don't get mad at me. You know, I know, I know some of my family members watch, but <laughs> well, he'll he'll admit it himself, so he knows. <laughs> but I had once I got saved, I had to get rid of some of the thinking of my that my mother and my father put into me, praise God. Amen. They put some good stuff in me. Uh, if, if you think I got a strong work ethic, my wife calls it workaholic. I, I try not to do that. But if you think I got a strong work ethic, it's because the, the, uh, Mildred Edwards and Benny Edwards put in me a work ethic, praise God. Amen. If, if I, because I did, the reason why I didn't drink, even though there was drugs all around me and majority of my family members, because my father didn't drink. Praise yeah. Jesus. Yeah. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. My mother didn't smoke. Hallelujah. Yeah. She drank, but she didn't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so they put some good things in me. They taught me some good things. They pushed me to do well. Amen. Um, they, they believed in me. Both my parents mm -hmm. believed in me. They thought I was super smart. Even though I thought I was stupid, they would try to make sure that I knew I, they, they believed in me. They thought I was smart. Praise God. Amen. And so I've got a lot of good things to say about my parents. But they weren't perfect, and they taught me some bad stuff too. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when I got into the Word of God, I had to say, oh, I know what Mom said, but i got to check that. I know what Pop used to say, but nope. That goes contrary to this book. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to you have to put aside all the things, traditions, the way you grew up. You know, I, as a black American, I've had some some things, some traditions that were instilled in me. Some and, and, and some even some bitterness. Praise God. Yeah. I, I was never um, like some of my Muslim friends. Some of my Muslim friends, man, they. It, they were just ridiculous. The, the white man is the white. They couldn't keep the white man out of their mouth to save their life. <laughs> One of the things that God gave me was a love for every race. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. I, see, Ashley, I don't look at her as white. She's white, but she's not. She is. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's white. <laughs> she's, to me, she's, my, she's just as much as my daughter is Lydia. Yes. Black. Hallelujah. And Amen. Lincoln, my son, he's black. Your wife is Japanese. And my wife is Japanese. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See, I don't care about that stuff. You know why? Because of this book. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The book says that, every, that God is made from every tribe and tongue and every nation of one blood. Yes. Amen. This skin pigmentation don't mean a thing to me. Amen. Hallelujah. I, now, now mine is beautiful and brown, you know. I, I like my skin pigmentation, but it don't. But it doesn't measure how I feel about somebody who has a skin pig, different skin pigmentation than I do. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, if really growing up in the in the black American community where I was in a predominantly black setting, I was much lighter than I am now. You know, the sun has made me a lot darker than I used to be. I, if you see some pictures of me as a kid, I was very light-skinned. Well, back then, even black people could be racist towards one another. She's, you so high yellow. You almost you light and bright and almost white. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> people can be prejudiced towards each other, and, then, and it's the value system that they're taught. Um, amongst each other in schools and culture, the Word of God tells you to break free from that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But yet, you go to some churches and they still have that old worldly value system in there. Hmm. I, a close friend of mine, white guy, who was married to a black woman, um, he 
went to a, you know, he, he we went to a church one time, and, you know, because he's, uh, and there was a predominantly black church, you know, he feels comfortable in it. Um, but he goes in there, and the preacher's talking bad about the white man. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's yeah, Pastor Steve. And, you know, he, he let us know. <laughs> he said that was kind of a painful service for him. <laughs> you know, then you, you, then you go to some places where, like another friend of mine's, because he was black, black guy married to a white woman. And he's being told, he, he's called the pastor of the church, and he's being told that he's going to have a difficult time pastoring. And he's being told this by supposed men of God. Because you're, you're a mixed couple, and people are going to look down on y'all, and all this stuff, and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, because you're married to a white woman, and, and, and the black people are going to say, who do you think he is um, bringing his white woman to, to be our first lady? And the white people are going to be saying, "Who? we don't need no black man over us. The fact that he wasn't married to a white guy. He's like, I'm just going to believe God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah, that, that, that's the same thing. I said, I don't care what people say about me and my wife. Praise Jesus. God, did you call me? Yes. Then I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. And I, I, know that, I, I know there's some people that won't come here just simply because I'm not married to a black woman. But that's okay. <laughs> you know why? Because God called me. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I don't go by the world's value system. I look at what the word of God says, and I stick with that in my mind. And Satan, see, Satan could use that to distract me from, from pastoring this church. Praise God. Mm -hmm. He could use that from, from keeping me, to get, to get me get out of ministry. Don't think it, it hasn't been a temptation. It has. But how many of y'all know that Jesus was tempted too? Amen. But he didn't give in. Amen. Amen. So, you know, like the song we sing. Don't give up. Don't you give in. I'm not giving in to what Satan does, and I'm not giving in to the world's value system. I find out what the Word of God says about my situation, and I stand and continue to believe him. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Hallelujah. Don't let Satan distract you in the multiple ways that he's able to do it. Oh, my goodness. Is it 130 already? Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Give me a <coughs> couple of minutes, praise God. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> mm, I got one. <laughs> That's a scary thing to say to a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two, two minutes. Preacher, two minutes. I ain't listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Steve. 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 <laughs> we'll, we'll, pick, we'll pick up where we left off next week. But, uh, here's the thing I want you to see, especially here in verse 19. It says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom. Now, what is the kingdom? God's rule, reign, government. Praise God. Amen. Amen. See, the word of the kingdom overrides the word of any government, including the United States government. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So even if the government speaks contrary to God's word, I go with God's word. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 For me, now, you know, everybody may not agree with me, but during that COVID time, the government spoke a lot of stuff that was contrary to the word of God. Mm. Amen. And I, I just refused to comply with it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Others were saying, well, you know, the Bible says we must obey the, the authorities. Yes, it does when the authorities are doing what's right. Praise God. Amen. Amen. For example, I know I'm wrong, and so I, I, I still need deliverance sometimes. When I'm on the highway and the speed limit is 65 and I want to go 80. <laughs> I, 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 I'm wrong, and, when, if, and I, did get, I got a ticket once. Right. No, just once. <laughs> just once. <laughs> I, I got a ticket. I was going 85 in the 65 mile per hour zone. And the Lord, and, and I was get, starting to get upset. And the Lord told me, he said he was absolutely right to give you that ticket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You were disobeying, the, you were not only disobeying the law of the land, you were disobeying me by disobeying the law of the land. Amen. <laughs> and I, I was like, okay, yay, yeah, Lord, yay, yeah, Lord. You know, thank God that, you know, the, the police officer, he was a Christian too. He heard me listening to some teaching. He said, All right, I'm going to knock it down. I'm going to knock it down to 75. Mercy, mercy. And yeah, he had mercy on me. Just go to the court, and um, they'll, and this is your first ticket, so they'll let you off. So 
So they only made me pay a forty dollar uh, fee, and that was it. You know, but but the thing is that if you go to speed limit, you're obeying God. If you don't rob a bank, you're obeying God. Hallelujah. <laughs> but anytime the government tells you to do stuff that goes contrary to what God says, you go with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. It, um, again, you you got to follow. You know, there's certain things that when God God can speak to me, He may not speak to you. You may not be at the certain level that I'm at. Um, so I'm not going to tell you certain things about whether you get, should get the shot or not and things like that. Praise God. Mm -hmm. that's, be, that's between you and the Lord. The Lord told me don't do it. So I did. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The government told me that you, you either do it or, or you lose your job. I said goodbye. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, uh, so the, you know, the, 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 the government told me I needed to shut down this church during COVID. We kept it open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It was only a few of us here. The rest of y'all was watching online, so we just waving at y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but I do appreciate at least y'all was watching online. <laughs> Glory yeah, to God. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. But, but yeah, there was, but they told they told me I had to shut it down, and I kept it open. I was waiting for the day where they would come in and arrest me. <laughs> Thank God they never did. They arrested a few other pastors, though. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my pastor friends, some of my pastor friends just said it like this. He said, one of them, well, I tell you, Pastor Flowers told me, he, he said, I was, he thought I was absolutely crazy. <laughs> in a good way. He, not, not in a bad way. He wouldn't insult me. He was like, man, he said, you are just brave. I said, I ain't brave. I was scared every Sunday I went to the church. <laughs> I, I was thinking, man, is this the day I'm going to be in handcuffs? <laughs> but I trusted God. Hallelujah. And whether I went to jail or not, I was going to trust him. But you've got to obey God more than the the word of the kingdom, the government of God, overrides anything. Satan will use the word of the government to get you to do things. He'll put into law things that are contrary to word, God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Just because the world and the government has made it lawful for you to kill your baby, doesn't mean that killing your baby is right. Praise God. Amen. Just because the, the law... And I'm going to say this. I know i got a lot of people, including even family members, that are homosexual. But just because the law in, in the United States says it's okay for gay people to get married doesn't make it right. Amen. Amen. And pastors who preach and do um, gay weddings <laughs> are absolutely outside of the will of God. Amen. Amen. I would rather you put the handcuffs on me than for me to do a gay wedding. I won't do it. I'm not going to do it. Praise Jesus. But see, that's th these are just examples of people who allow Satan to distract them from the truth and to get them outside of God's word. Now, let me hit, hit you with something more personal. The government says that you need to go into debt in order to get your needs met. They tell you that, you know, if you don't make enough money, you got to borrow in order in order to get all these luxury items. This is what the world tells you. Don't believe that. Go in what God's word says. Hallelujah. Amen. Leave all some of these, you know, these banks, they try, they, they, they got to try to make money too. They've been trying to push me and Sister Taco to get this, what was that, equity? Key lock. Try, they raising up the, hey, you can get $50,000. Hey, we'll give you 100000 you got to pay that back sometime. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> yeah, now, I, we got $50,000. They, they gave us this home line equity of $50,000. They tried to raise it up to 100 I told them, just keep it at fifty. I said, I'll just keep it there if I needed it. But I'm going to believe God I never need it. Hallelujah. Because he'll meet all my needs. Praise God. But, you know, I just keep it there so that I can have some, I can, my credit score can stay up. Hallelujah. We borrowed $10,000 from that thing, and we paid it back quickly. That was just to get that retirement so I could get out of the, um, out of the government. Praise God. Mm -hmm. um, let me sh one other thing, and we'll get ready to close out. It says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. How many of y'all know that God wants you to understand the word? Now, he wants you to understand it. 
God doesn't give you 66 books and say, oh, you'll never understand me. <laughs> but do you know that there are people, Christians, preachers who tell you that? You can't understand it? Yeah, mysterious. <laughs> I remember when I was in Korea, you know, I was still a young Christian at the time, being a little strong baby Christian, and I was sitting with, the, with three preachers. And we would, and you know, they were complaining about you know the congregation and stuff. You should never complain about your congregation in front of somebody that doesn't know that's still a baby in the Lord. Hallelujah. But you know, back then I was a little more sensitive, and I said, you know, I said maybe one of the reasons why a lot of the people are having are acting the way they are is because they don't understand the word. And you would have thought that I had said something really bad. Because the way they looked at me, they said, <laughs> Brother Troy, <laughs> what do you mean understand the word? I've been in this thing for 10, 15 years, and I still don't understand it. <laughs> and the first thing I thought was, man, that's why you so, preach so sorry on Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the only church I, I could go to at the time. <laughs> If I would have got kicked out of that, I would have had no church to go to. Uh, I had to go to one of the Korean churches where I didn't understand what they were saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thought that came into my mind. But people say stuff like that. God, what, do you know Proverbs? Write this passage down so I don't, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 and 7. Um, verse 7 is particular specifically says, with all thy getting, get understanding. Amen. When you're listening to the Word of God, the Word of God is not there just to fill your mind with scripture verses to quote and, and then put into the realm of mystery, as some people seem to believe that you have to do. God actually wants you to understand it. Hallelujah. Amen. And do you know that if you fail to understand it, Satan, that gives Satan the opportunity to steal it from you? Mm -hmm. yes. Beloved, if you don't understand something, you're not going to benefit from it. Praise God. Amen. It's just, um, thank God that my wife is good at math. Because when I was going to, when I was taking my umpteenth college course, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm a college dropout like four times. <laughs> I'm going to, to secular college three times. I, I finished a year, a, a little over a year of college. And then I went to Bible seminary and dropped out of that. So I mean, I'm, I'm just a college dropout. Don't jump. Young people, don't follow me in that, okay? <laughs> learn, from, learn from my mistakes on this one. <laughs> but, when I was taking college courses and I had to take math, and because my math skills were so bad, they made me take some of the lowest forms of math, um, I couldn't understand it. So it, was, it wasn't benefiting me at all. Sister Taco had to sit down many times and explain it to me. I passed my math classes only because of her. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. She's good at math. I'm lousy at math. I, that's why... I, you know who takes care of all the finances in the house? <laughs> Her. She put me on an allowance. That's the only thing I don't want. <laughs> told me a couple of days ago, you only got $200 this month. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't tell her. I said, man, I must have already spent $190 that long. <laughs> well, why'd you wait till now to tell me that? <laughs>
get understanding. Whose responsibility is it to get understanding? Ours. Ours. Whose responsibility? Ours. Ours. That's right. It's your responsibility. I am the sower. What is my job? To sow. My job is to sow. Sow the word. Your job is to receive it and understand. Praise God. Amen. That way, and I showed you how to do all that. You've got to get rid of the distractions. Praise God. Amen. You've got to make God's word priority. Your, God's word has to be priority over your television watching, your movie watching, your game playing, your internet, social media. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know. I remember when I first got on, I, I, would, I refused to get on Facebook until I think it was 2014 when I first got on Facebook. I, I refused it because I, I knew people that were addicted to it. So I got on Facebook 2014 and I got addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, had to, I put something up there and then I got to check the statuses every five minutes. Did anybody put a like there? I only got five likes. Man, what's wrong with y'all? <laughs> so, yeah, so I had to learn to chill out with that. Praise God. Amen. So you got to put everything that distracts you. I'm not saying you shouldn't do any of these things. Praise the Lord. Right. We, there's nothing wrong with having some clean entertainment. There's nothing wrong with interacting with people on the on the computer. Amen. Praise God. There's not even nothing wrong with most of these. With, I won't say most of these. I only watched a few. There's nothing wrong with all the Nigerian movies. Hallelujah. Some, like I said, some of them are funny. I might borrow for some from some of y'all watching it next weekend. So. <laughs> but the thing is, don't if all if all of that is taking up your time and you're spending less time in this, the devil's able to steal it from you. Praise yep. God. Amen. Amen.